Part 7. I can't tell my partner everything. Many relationships begin with a deeply misleading but charming sense that we can tell a partner everything. At last, there is no more need for the usual hypocrisies. We can come clean about so much that we previously needed to keep to ourselves. Our reservations about our friends. Our irritation over small but wounding remarks by colleagues. Our interest in less often mentioned sexual practices. Love seems founded on the idea of an absence of secrecy. Then, gradually, we become aware of so much we cannot say. It might be around sex. On a work trip, we kissed a colleague and nearly went to bed with them. We discovered a porn site that beautifully targeted a special quirk of our erotic imagination. We found our partner's sibling very alluring. Or the secret thoughts could be more broad-ranging. The blog they wrote for work about their experience in client care was very boring. The dark green scarf they so love wearing is hideous. Their best friend from school, to whom they are still very loyal, is, in our view, silly and dull. In the wedding photo of their parents, lovingly displayed in a silver frame in the living room, their mother looks unbearably smug. Love begins with a hope of, at least, being able to tell someone else everything about who we are and what we feel. The relief of honesty is at the heart of the feeling of being in love. But this sharing of secrets sets up in our minds and in our collective culture a powerful and potentially problematic ideal, that if two people love one another, they must always tell each other the truth about everything. The idea of honesty is sublime. It presents a deeply moving vision of how two people can be together, and it is a constant presence in the early months. But in order to be kind, and in order to sustain love, it ultimately becomes necessary to keep a great many thoughts out of sight. Keeping secrets can seem like a betrayal of the relationship. At the same time, the complete truth eventually appears to place the union in mortal danger. Much of what we would ideally like to have recognised and confirmed might be genuinely disturbing even to someone who is fond of us. We face a choice between honesty and acceptability, and, for reasons that deserve a great deal of sympathy, mostly we choose the latter. We are perhaps too conscious of the bad reasons for hiding something. We haven't paid enough attention to the noble reasons why, from time to time, true loyalty may lead us to say very much less than the whole truth. We are so impressed by honesty that we have forgotten the virtues of politeness, this word defined not as a cynical withholding of important information for the sake of harm, but as a dedication to not rubbing someone else up against the true, hurtful aspects of our nature. It is ultimately no great sign of kindness to insist on showing someone our entire selves at all times. Repression, a certain degree of restraint, and the dedication to editing our pronouncements belong to love as much as the capacity for explicit confession. The person who cannot tolerate secrets, who in the name of being honest, divulges information so wounding it cannot be forgotten, is no friend of love. Just as no parent should ever tell a child the whole truth, so we should accept the ongoing need to edit our full reality.